Check it, check it, check it. It's your unique host. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing official, Miss Jamaica. What's going on? No, 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 but if you want to see all our visuals, you go over to our YouTube channel, hit subscribe, notification, so you don't miss out on any of our episodes, because that's the only way you can keep tapped in. But we do have exclusive content, and if you want to see that, you got to be a member. How you can become a member is under each and every video, including this one right here in the description section below. There's a link that says join our membership. Click that link, join our membership, because y'all always see us on the street and be like, man, I love what y'all doing. Keep up the work. How can we support the brand? This is how you can support the brand. Join our membership. Thank you in advance. And we love man, you. Man, hey, man, listen, man. We got a special guest in there today, y'all. He don't need no introduction, man. This guy right here, man, this is second time around. This is a song. Second. See, I can't sing like that, I can't remember Second who's time around. You know what I'm saying? Right. Mac is in the building, man. What no up, limit, what up, what man. Up, what's happening? How y'all doing out there? What's going on? To all the people of Louisiana, Texas. What up? Man, it's good to have you back on the show, man. Sure, I, I, I definitely, man, been watching you, man. You've been busy, man. Now, yeah. when I when I first left you, that day, you, I didn't get to see the video, but you and Fiend them had did something together back then. It was the first, one of your earliest videos when you came on. <laughs> yeah, we did. Um, That was, uh, I think, the concert. I think the concert at uh, House of Blues. So, yeah, that was that was a good feeling. That was the 25th anniversary of Shell Shock. Wow. Mm. Yeah. Wow. And that and that's and that's something else because Shell Shock, man, like how did it feel, man? Did you did you have to redo some of them songs or did you have to sing some of them rap some of them songs at any of the concerts? Oh yeah, what well, that entire concert was the twenty fifth. So you did every song? So I did not every song, but I did most of the songs from there. Couple songs from other projects, but it was mainly Shell Shock um concert. Well we had the twenty fifth anniversary of uh World War Three now. Yeah, that's in September. That's been, that's it's better go September. down again. Yeah. yeah. How you feel about it? Um, I feel good. I think um, I think um, I'm ready. You ready? Yeah. yeah. Man, I, like I said, man, just to re, just to get back, you never would, you never knew when the situation was going on that you was in that you would be back and you have a chance to really get back in the groove of you know singing these songs. Did you ever think about it when you was on lock? Of course. You thought about it? Of course. It. I did. I, in fact, um, I used to lay on my back, beat on my chest, and, like, give myself concerts all night. You know what I mean? Like, I would see the, the, the people. I would hear the, the cheers from the crowd. All of the stuff that we're doing now, I just kind of visualized it while I was laying in um, my cell. Wow, man. I, like I said, you you dope, man. I love I love the way you moving anyway. What you got? But coming out... <laughs> um, You've been out for a while now, and we were talking about social media yeah. because that's the big move, especially when you're in the entertainment industry. You have to learn how to market yourself on social media and have everybody see it and stuff like that. Right. How hard has it been for you to maneuver in social media world? I suck on social media. <laughs> that's not true. You better than a lot of people. Well, let, let's put it this way. My adjustment <laughs> is, is, is new. You know, it was something new. I didn't... I really didn't understand what it was when I was locked up. You know, I heard a lot of people would come through the prison, new guys and stuff, and they would be talking about Instagram, talking about YouTube. But because I didn't have access to it, I didn't really understand what it was. I just heard them talk about it. But after getting out and seeing what it was and seeing that, okay, so this is how you keep up with, you know, your mm -hmm, favorite this mm -hmm. or your favorite that, I was like, all right, let me plug in. When I plugged in, I was like, Man, this is crazy. Like, this is a totally different planet. Because whenever you um, went, well, there was no social media at all, or there was, because back then there was MySpace. Oh. Not even, not even no. MySpace. Not even MySpace. Not, no, I, no, no, no. Early no. 90s. I was arrested on February 21st, 2000. Mm. So when did social media start? That was my space time. 2005? Like 2005. Wow. Boy, I, that's crazy. No, it had to be before that, because... Two. 2002 because I got here to United States in 2001 2001 2001 and when I came 2001 um tagged was around my tag was around I know for sure because I remember my friends at school introduced me to that and had me gone tagged so I know tag was around 2001 so my space had to be around as well yeah so 
Yeah. It probably was, but it probably it wasn't, wasn't like it just popular wasn't, yeah. stages. Right. You know, it probably wasn't nothing that everybody had at the time. No. Mm -hmm. And you weren't forced to live the lifestyle yeah, of social I media. I didn't know nothing about it. When Man. I tell you nothing. So mm -hmm. when I got arrested, the last phone I had, it was 2003? Three. Wow. Huh. The last phone I had when I got arrested was like the last phone that had come out was, was the Nextel. Brick or the next, it was the next Nextel. Nextel. Yeah, that was the last thing Chirping. that came out. Yeah. I, you know, and that was a new technology. That was definitely a new technology, man. I, I, I'm i going to be honest with you. You, go, you give yourself less credit. I give you more credit. When I go on social media, I see Mac popping up everywhere. Which tells me, well, I'm, I'm getting but but it's a lot of people that cannot understand it. They never went to prison, so you know they out here, but they don't get it. I mean, some people may don't want to get it. No, some of them would like to understand how to be in that right. phase, but they don't understand how to open up in that way. Right, right, and and and, and I'm gonna tell you, it takes a lot because not everybody think about it. They said that public speaking is one of the biggest fears, the mm -hmm, greatest fears, right? Mm -hmm. So social media gives people the platform, anybody the platform to public speak. So not everybody is prepared for, you know, to be in the public's eye like that. But also it gives you um, the public, but it makes you more comfortable to me because you're doing it behind a camera where you're not doing it where millions of people are watching you, so to say, face to face. You know what I mean? Right. The only person right. that, so you, you sort of more comfortable compared to people who have to stand up in front of millions of people and make a speech. You get more, you know, nervous and stuff like right, that right. compared to, you know. Oddly enough, I had the opposite. Really? Yeah, like for me, it's easy for me to stand in front of millions of people. I had to get adjusted to getting in front of a camera. Because that's what you were used to from back in the day. Right, and and I think even back in the day, I didn't like cameras. Mm. Like it, pe Most of the photographs that people have of me of from you. back in the days were photographs that were probably taken without my knowledge okay. or just taken on the fly or, you know, I, I didn't really like cameras like that because, mm -hmm. I mean, it was like somebody's, a camera always meant Somebody's capturing you. You know, you could be in a, mm -hmm. a vulnerable moment. You can be in a, a um, you might not look the way you want to look right. in that moment. You know what I mean? So I just never really was into cameras. Even so, like from like family members and friends, you still didn't like the cameras? Yeah, I took pictures, pictures. with family members, okay. but I just wasn't. I wasn't, a, I wasn't the guy that was going to be in front of every camera. Right, you know what I mean? That right. wasn't me. And social media is something that I had to get adjusted to mm -hmm. because I had to, you know, make myself comfortable enough to just be in front of a camera. Do you see the importance of it? Of course. Of course. I mean, the whole, I, the whole, I, the whole moniker, camouflage, mm -hmm. you know, I used to refer to myself as the camp, Mr. Camouflage. Right. You know, some people, you know, it was... On some songs, the camouflage assassin. Some songs, the camouflage lover, the, the camouflage whatever. But the whole idea of camouflage was just I never really wanted to be on Front Street. Mm -hmm, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I always wanted to just blend in with the crowd. But when you first came home, um, word got back to me that you you had a little issue with putting the camouflage back on at first. Um, when you perform, I don't know if it was an issue. Did with you did you do it? Camouflage? Yeah, I put it on. When you first went out on stage, but why would he have an issue with it? It got back to me like he didn't do. You know, at first he didn't go out there with it. I think it was Mr. Servon told me. I can't remember. But then when he put it back, when he put it on and went out there, you could tell he, you know, he got his feeling back or something. That Servon giving me these insights. Yeah, well, that sound I like want to say that's what he told that me. That sounds like some Servon. <laughs> America, we were the camera. Right, right here, yeah, he America. Right me and Servon need to talk about it. <laughs> so, shout um, out to Servo. I love that dude, man. That's the homie. So I think, um, nah, I think that I was, when I first came home, I was fresh off of the parole hearing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I was told a few things at the parole hearing that uh, I was still trying to process and get um, a clear definition as to what was expected. Right. Of my, you know, my release. My release. And so it was, I guess I was just kind of trying to feel my way. But, um, yeah, once I put it back on. How did you yeah. feel? Um, felt like the old you came back? Well, no, I felt like a better me came okay. back. Okay. You know, it's, it's um, the old me was, yeah. I'm proud of him. Okay. I'm, I'm proud of the old me. I mean, Shell Shock was 
was recorded by a 20 year old that was completely out of his mind. <laughs> and I am so proud of him because he was a reflection of my wildest dreams at mm. that time. And um, as a grown man, now when I put it on, I can look back and say, yeah. I did that. I did that. Wow. I think I thank God for the fact of how you understand evolution. You live in it. You live in it. You yeah, know. You have to. But but at the end of the day, some people get lost in the sauce. That's why you have people that have recidivism where they go back right. into the system. It really mentally messes with a lot of people to of where course. you can't you can't function without those stipulations that we faced. You right. know. So a lot of them go back into that with with a lot of different things. When you look at like uh, depression. When, right. You know, mental illness, when they're struggling to understand uh, the way they lost loved ones when they was gone. Right. All type of stuff that hadn't happened. Their kids was, the, you, they feel like they, they, they was not there for their kids. They, a right. lot of people struggle with that. Yeah, and, and even, I didn't know what depression was until um, I started learning about it in prison. And I realized that I was once depressed. Mm. Like, I didn't know, I wasn't depressed as much in prison but while in prison and learning about depression, I began to understand why I was feeling the way I was feeling before I got locked up. So yeah, it was it was it was interesting. It was interesting. So you were going through depression before you got locked up. Yeah, I was actually um, dealing with dealing with a and and I like to um, I like to choose those words carefully because exactly. there are some people that's dealing with some serious depression. And I don't ever want to undermine what they're dealing with. Because there's different uh, levels. Right. But I, I think I was dealing with slight depression at mm -hmm. probably the height of my career with No Limit. Mm -hmm. Wow. And it was, um, it was interesting. I didn't know it at the time. But when I started learning more about depression, then I was like, oh, so that's what I was dealing with. And I think it just came from me um, as a child, you know, thinking and believing that, okay, when I get this amount of money or when I when I'm able to do this for my family it will solve all of whatever I'm dealing with right and I think that the uh, beauty in that is even a poor man at least he has the hope mm -hmm. that money will make him happy but what happens to the man who has the money and he's still not happy he go blow his brains out that's right because he don't he don't see any other um, or they, some of them turn to drugs. Right, or they turn to drugs, or they, they just, because they don't really understand, okay, I've, I've done all of this, and I'm still feeling empty, now what? And I started learning that about myself, that at that time, um, yeah, you, I was going through that. And oddly enough, some of the best works of art come from that, mm -hmm. because... World War Three was a product of that. Right. Wow. And it's so crazy because then I love the fact that you said that because there's so many other kids out here who are watching you and I heard so many talk where, oh, I just need to get money. I need to get to this point right. where I can and I feel like I'll be happy. But we've always heard the saying that money <laughs> do not buy happiness. No, you know what I mean? But they'll say, well, it'll solve a lot of my problems. But what do you prefer? Do you prefer your problems to be solved or true inner peace? Right. You know what I mean? Wow. And and that's and I and I guess that goes back to America. <laughs> <laughs> money seriously, money will not solve every problem. I'm a person who believes that money only gives a light to who you really are. Example, I believe some people are humble simply because they don't have anything. Mm -hmm. What would happen if you give that person some access? They would show out. In many cases, they acting like who ain't. You know, so it's, I call it the honey bun theory. Like, Let's say I'm walking down a, uh, a tier in the prison and I see two guys in the cell and they both are hungry and they've been there together for the past week and you know, they both hungry. One of them sleep, the other one is up. And I say, here man, take this honey bun bro for you and you sell it. Now, the good dude is gonna wake his celly up and make sure he has 
of half of that honey bun because he know that him and his Sally been in there starving for the last couple of days. But see that other dude? He going to eat it and not tell him nothing about it. Ain't going to tell him it's nothing. It's over. Bury that. And I look at people like that who you give money to. They got some celebrities and stars that are those kind of people. Mm -hmm. Wow. I you have both kinds, but you have some yeah, that's just like that. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you about the bill passing uh, for people not to, you guys got that Louisiana bill passed, then you, for people not being able to uh, use the lyrics, the, the the court system not able to do that when when, when one might be going through a, right. you know, a, a, some type of a crime. Um, just want to know how you even how you you guys even done that, you know? All right, so let me first say that that was my um, that was the idea I had when I got out. My wife was like, "What you want to do?" I said, "I want to stop this from happening to anyone that after me, right? I don't want nobody to experience what I've been through." So what she did, and this is my wife. Shout out to my wife, awesome. uh, Angelique. Y'all, shout out Angelique, man. Shout out Angelique, yes, my sir. wife. She spearheaded a team of individuals that. Um, that, that work behind the scenes, including the Recording Academy um, and some other people who probably would like to remain anonymous, but uh, shout out to the Recording Academy for being behind it. And um, we just got with these lawmakers and we actually um, ironically got a conservative to author the bill. Awesome. Because we understood that in Louisiana is a predominantly race, a red state. So, mm -hmm. you know, our approach was the the free speech, you know what I mean? Because that's what resonates with conservatives. Now, you may want free speech, whomever, not not them, just some people want free speech because they want to be able to say what they want to say about, mm -hmm. you know, people they don't understand. And I get it. But if we aligned on this one thing, then let's move on it. So we was able to get it passed uh, August First, 2023, the RAP Act, the Restoring Autistic Protection Act, became law in Louisiana. We were the second place uh, state to pass it. It was passed in California under uh, Governor Newsom. He fought it, was there at the signing. Um, we got it passed here, and we have it on the books in a couple of states where, you know, I just, to testified, I just testified at a hearing in uh, Maryland a couple of uh, last month because we were trying to get it passed there, and we're trying to get it passed ultimately on the federal level. Wow, mm -hmm. which would be great. Yeah, where nobody would have to deal with this. But let me, um, America, <laughs> let me be very specific about what this bill protects you from exactly. and what it doesn't. That's what I wanted to know. All right. So the, Re the Restoring Autistic Protection Act, it protects um, your song lyrics and autistic expression from being used as a character witness against you. Now, what does that mean? Basically, they're supposed to already do this. This is we're we're, we're basically codifying the law, mm -hmm. making them give you not making, but basically forcing an evidentiary hearing to determine, you know, for a judge to determine if this evidence is even relevant to the crime. In my situation, for an example, songs just. Any song, they just used any song that they felt had violent or aggressive lyrics and they used it to basically show that show if character. he raps this kind of stuff, then he's capable of mm -hmm. this type of behavior and crime. Well, our law protects you from that happening. Wow. Now, what our law doesn't protect you from is if you say on the record, America, that... um. You killed someone last night on such and such street with this color shirt on and they can prove you were there and someone actually died last night in the way that, and manner that you described and you show motive and intent. Then my brother, our law does our sister, our law does not protect you from that. That was a confession. That is <laughs> that's what that sounds like. <laughs> very close to a confession. Wow. And you got to be out of your mind to think to that, do that, you know. Right. Or to to even do that. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. And, and I'm gonna get you wrapped up, but what what about the music, Mac? Uh where is the music? Is it coming? A lot of people wanna hear more. Yeah. I just put it like that. We wanna hear more from Mac. Yeah, so 
which is another thing. We got music. We got a lot of music coming on the way. I've been working on a lot of stuff. I did a song with uh, BG when he came. Shout out to BG, man. I'm waiting on that moment. interview. He up and, there uh, with me before he left. Yeah, yeah. yeah, we, yeah, did, yeah. We, uh, we did a song. <laughs> me and him did a song about somebody who's close to my heart, Soldier Slim. And, man, uh, shout out. We, I can't uh, wait to hear Soulja that. Slim. BG is actually dealing with um, some restrictions. Yeah, I seen you that. You know what I mean? And, and uh, I just so we just we just. Uh, Keeping him in thought, you know, in yeah. prayers, just making sure he's good, um, and and he will be, you know. BG, BG got a time. lot. Of, he been he had did some working, man. He had a lot of songs, and so um, I got some songs coming out. Probably uh, the the first new song that I'm going to release will probably be out within the next two weeks. Really? Yeah. Other than the pro the whole project, because I'm gonna just start putting songs out. I had to get adjusted to the way they doing stuff now. You know, back in the days, it was like four, five minutes song. Out, you put an album yeah. out four, five minutes. You wait about two years. You put another album out. They gotta it's come like out now, quick now. They're putting, they're putting songs. TikTok got, got them every, going in. Yeah, and I'm like, I had to get adjusted. America, I'm 46. Now. I'm gonna be 47. <laughs> I be tired, and I like quality over quantity. I mean, you know. Yeah, but I, I just know that you got a lot going on up here, and I know already you you cold, man. So I just Appreciate can't wait it. to hear, you know, because uh, this is something I ask you. Do you when, do you think it's ever a time when you get too old to, to do your art? To rap? No. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? No. Yes. Now, I will say this. Because you got a fan base. If you're whack, you're probably already too old. If, if, if you just whack, it, you probably, about that? yeah, it's, it ain't even <laughs> stop. You know, some people, I just, stop, brother, stop. But um, if you, I think if, if you can keep up with the speed of the times and you're still skilled in that manner, and I like to consider myself in that vein, and um, I'm going to do it until. Because, wait a minute. What on, about I Killer? I got to say Killer Mike. Killer Mike. Is uh, I guess the truth. He, and he just got some Grammys. Yeah. And he's not no the young truth. buck. So, so let's look, talk about that for a second. He, look how he's spitting. Killer Mike is spitting. But that's spitting. cool. That, but right. that's what I'm saying. So that that tells you that the age thing that everybody yeah, tries yeah, that, to. The age or not. We, we, I'm going to tell you, hip hop has entered the phase of rock, blues, and all of those other uh, genres. They mature to the point where people can do it in their advanced ages now. At one time, it was a young man's sport. But just like anything else, hip hop is now what fifty years old. Yeah, yeah. So it now it behaves like a fifty year old. It's doing this thing. So like when you and, and I'm gonna it's let you season. speak, but when when you seen Killer Mike win that and then get arrested, what did you think about that? Now, now we got to talk what? about the whole thing. You know what? I'm gonna be told out of this. I didn't know anything about it. Somebody had it was me. right there. Right, but I, once he again, wasn't watching it. I don't be watching so a lot of stuff on social media, so I had to be told, man, Killer Mike got arrested. And I just thought, for real? They're like, yeah, and I just, it was just right something after like, the it was something like I just heard in passing, and I didn't, you know, I, I didn't hear nothing else about it. But I do know this, America, I am a member of the Recording Academy, a voting member, and I voted for Killer Mike. <laughs> man. In all three of those categories. Wow! So shout out to Mike. Shout out to Killer Mike, man. And, uh, shout out to Mac for voting for uh, Killer Mike. <laughs> Killer Mike, we'll go right back in. He was like, like I said, I never did. I didn't count him out because I heard that album in the bars and the way that he was a staff. Yeah. That's what we need. We need the essence of music to help our people. Well, Killer man. Mike is a true artist, a real hip hop head, a true artist, and you can just tell in the content, the delivery, the flow, the uh, aggression. I mean, Mike, Mike is a real MC. And he's just an all-around solid dude. When I, when me and my wife did a, um, a symposium, a hip-hop symposium last year at Dillard University about the song lyrics and things of the, uh, that nature, Mike flew in and did it for us, man. Ain't even charges. Wow. Flew in and came, spoke at it at the college. Ain't even, even charged. And that's love, yeah. man. Like I said, that's that maturity thing. Wouldn't that's even let us pay for it. Nah, I got this. Yeah. yeah. The one thing I can say, man, is, man, I'm watching you. We love you, me and my wife. We, we just it. celebrated Appreciate our 21st anniversary. Well, yeah, I saw it. And so, I, I, think I, I commented on that. I commented so, on that. So, it. thank you. I for, caught that. That was after I was told that I wasn't. I said, like, man, Mag don't like boss talk. I need no, him to be. Man, he got to show us love. We push no, for I Mag. Didn't, I, I, I just, I didn't know. I didn't know I wasn't following y'all. Wow, that's weird, man. But I, I, we love you, man, and we love, we love Appreciate everything you stand for. I love the peace and the unity and your 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 journey 
That's right. what keep Appreciate me going. That. That's what keep these cameras rolling. Yeah. You know, people don't That's know energy do. helps energy. Right. Iron sharpens iron. So your story becomes my story right. because I'm rocking with you and I come to New Orleans. New Orleans and go to Sharon and I get to meet you and now I'm telling everybody man y'all gotta rock with Mac Mac the dopest man he home now and that's my whole mission when it starts to be something where God then injected your lifestyle into my lifestyle you right. know what I'm saying and and the energy was right you know what I mean right. uh, you don't get that from everybody so it's electrifying to be able to really just you know feel that and then be able to work and operate to that you right. know what I mean so thank you so oh, much, man. It. How you can people get a hold of you, man? I, like I said, I hate to rush you out of here, hey, but you what, got a show to do. Yeah, so they got you can follow me on Instagram, Mac Phipps Official, on YouTube, Mac Phipps Official. Um, we got a new podcast. What, uh, you do? Yeah, don't know if we should announce it just yet. We did a couple yeah, episodes. Yeah, you say you should. So I should. Oh, all right. It's called The Jewel Exchange. I'm telling you, it's going to be the bomb. It's going to be y'all news place or music, entertainment, and the stories that shape our lives. Wow. Did I, Did I plug that properly? America <laughs> is going to be our new place for entertainment, music, and the culture, and the stories that shape our lives. Man, we love you, Mac, man. Like I said, if it's ever anything you need for Boss Talk, yes, we family, sir. we yes, locked sir. in. You need to get my number for show yeah. so you can hit me up if it's something you need. Uh, that's what I'm here for. I thank God for you. And, uh, man, make sure you guys watch this interview. Make sure you like, subscribe to the channel, man. Mac, man, we gonna, you coming back. Of course. Man, Mac, anytime Mac, I'm coming to New Orleans, too, because they want me back down there. A lot of yeah. people have been requesting that. So I'm going to have to sit down with you again. I got to make sure you in oh, town. Oh. Check it, man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk.